Hello, this video acts as an introduction to macroeconomics. It covers the basic ideas, concepts, and objectives of macroeconomics. Now it's good to remind you the difference between microeconomics and macroeconomics. Microeconomics examines the functioning of individual industries and the behavior of individual decision-making units, firms, and households. However, macroeconomics, it's the branch of economics that examines the economic behavior of aggregates, income, employment, output, and so on, on a national scale. So we can compare microeconomics to the tree and macroeconomics to the forest. So macroeconomics, it deals with the economy as a whole. It focuses on the determinants of total national income. It deals with aggregates, such as aggregate consumption and investment, and looks at the overall level of prices instead of individual prices. Now, macroeconomics, it's having objectives and concerns. One objective of macroeconomics is to develop better laws of government policies to maximize the society's welfare. More specifically, economists focus on three major concerns. The first concern or objective, it's output growth. For economists, the main measure of how economy is doing is aggregate output. So economics growth refers to an increase in aggregate production, leading to an increase in income, employment, consumption, thus a higher standard of living. The second objective, it's low rate of unemployment. Now the unemployment rate is the percentage of the labor force that is unemployed. Now the more people employed, the more efficient is the economy. Now the third objective, it's the price stability. It implies avoiding both prolonged inflation and deflation. Inflation is an increase in the overall price level. Usually, it complicates the economic decision-making process and slows economic growth. It also diminishes the value of savings. Now, deflation is a decrease in the overall price level. It's usually accompanied by the threat of a slowdown in economic growth. Why? Because people postpone consumption and companies postpone investment. So in general, price instability introduces uncertainty which uh, will impact and slow down the, over, the overall economic activity. Now some economists might give a higher priority to other goals such as equitable distribution of income, the elimination of the government budget deficit, a balanced foreign trade, reduction of pollution, economic security, and so on. Now, as I mentioned earlier, for economists, the main measure of how an economy is doing is aggregate output. So we're having here the business cycle. The business cycle is a model showing recurrent systematic fluctuations in the level of business activity, often characterized by changes in growth rate of real GDP or gross domestic product. In this business cycle, the economy is expanding as it moves uh, through point A from the trough to the peak. Now, when the economy moves from a peak down to a trough through point B, the economy is in recession. Convention conventionally, we say we have a recession when aggregate output declines for two consecutive quarters. Now, in order to understand how the macroeconomy works, 
it's it can be challenging because a great deal is going on at one time everything seems to affect everything else now to see the big picture it's helpful to divide the participants in the economy into four broad groups this is why we're having the circular flow diagram if uh, you show the income and the circular flow diagram it shows the income received and payments made by each sector of the economy so now we're having households receive income from firms and the government purchase goods and services from firms and pay taxes to the government also they purchase foreign made goods and services they are the imports the second sector we're having or actor they are firms they receive payments from households and the government for goods and services they produce now they pay wages dividends interest and rents to household and taxes to the government the third sector we're having is the government receives taxes from firms and households pays firms and households for goods and services including wages to government workers and interest and transfer to households now transfer payments they are cash payments made by the government to people who do not supply goods services or labor in exchange for these payments we can give an example like the social security benefits or like welfare payments finally people in other countries or the rest of the world purchase goods and services produced domestically so we're having the exports and although not shown in this diagram firms and governments also purchase imports from the rest of the world now another way of looking at the ways households firms government and the rest of the world relate to one another is to consider the markets in which they interact so we divide the market into three broad areas the first it's the goods and services market where firms supply to the goods and services market and households the government and firms demand for this market the second arena we're having it's the labor market in this labor market households supply labor firms and the government demand labor the third arena we're having it's the money or the financial market where households supply funds to this market in the expectation of earning income it could be in the form of dividends on stock and interest on bonds much of the borrowing and lending of households firms the government and the rest of the world are coordinated by financial institutions finally we have to know about the fiscal and monetary policy now both fiscal and monetary policy are an attempt to reduce economic fluctuations and smooth and smooth out the economic cycle the main difference is that fiscal policy involves changing government spending and taxes to influence the level of aggregate demand meanwhile monetary policy is set by the central bank and involves changing the interest rate and influencing the money supply now at the end they are both used to pursue policies of higher economic growth or controlling inflation now in this video we covered the main definitions objectives and concepts of macroeconomics in future videos we will define and we will see how we can measure the gdp the unemployment rate and the inflation thank you for watching this video if you like it please give it a thumbs up and stay tuned for future videos